Now, now, like that, you said everything you said. Like, I ain't even gonna. Like, you really just. I ain't even gonna say that no more because everything you said, I had to think about if it was my son just now. My son, you know, out what, 17, 18, he got a little girlfriend and some shit happened, and I'll be mad as fuck. Like, listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Sublime. This, this is really what I want to get to. A lot of women enter relationships in bad faith. They enter relationships expecting the worst. It's hard not to I understand know that, but let, let me finish. Understand. Let me finish. Let me finish. They enter relationships in bad faith. They don't do the proper vetting. They don't properly vet the dude that they're entering it with. So like their mind kind of, you know how your mind sets you up to prove itself, right? It's like, there ain't nothing good going to happen. And then you act surprised when nothing good happens. You've set yourself up for that. You didn't do your homework on the person and you came in negative. So why are, a lot, why are women doing that? Why are women not doing their work on the front end and coming in with negative expectations? I don't know. I'm not them. But even the stuff you're saying about niggas is gonna cheat on you and they're gonna leave you with oatmeal still making this, this, and that. Those aren't things to consider. At the end of the day, those are always things to consider when you're dealing with a man. Let's just be real. I agree. In the beginning, those are things to consider in the beginning. And that's why you look for the type of man who's not gonna leave you with oatmeal. In the beginning, during. Like, that's always something. But if, if, if you constantly do that, it's gonna run him away. Cause he's gonna feel like it's nothing I can do that's good enough. You got to vet a man based on like how he move in general. Like, is he is, is he somebody who's loyal to his friends? Is he somebody who's loyal to his family, loyal to his, his mission, You're his right. purpose and things like that? So if he can do that, like it's, it's certain dudes, like they won't, they won't take you serious as a friend. If they see all you do is cheat on your girl, they like, oh, if you can't be loyal to her, how are you going to be loyal to the business that we putting together and stuff like that? But again, but- if you want to see two different types of men together. In one dude, it's never gonna work, and you're always gonna be suspicious. I feel like you can't combine all that because all that can be separated. I just a man cheating on his girl has nothing and plays no part in how he conducts himself as a businessman. Cause them two different lives, two different worlds, and two different people that he gotta be. I can agree with that, but I'm saying there are some crossovers. It is some crossover. It that right there specifically depends on the person. If you just a shysty person in general, then that shit is just gonna blow over in all areas, relationships, business relationships, family, all that shit. If you just ain't shit, if you just ain't shit and it's in you, then that's just what's in you. But most times I feel like men can separate all that shit. Niggas be out here cheating like hell on their girlfriend, but they know how to get money. And and they know how to like, you know budget and do all that shit and know how to like it's just it just depend on the person because because um he can go home to his girlfriend and they can be doing all that relationship stuff and then go out where it's hard out here in the world and try to make ends meet and and try to get some money and take care of the household and shit like that so i just really think it all just depends on the person some things depend on people and some Things just you can separate. And some things can always still just flow all together because you can just be a not shit person all around, but you can separate the two as well. That's true. But I, what I'm trying to say to you is if you keep having negative like expectations, you're always going to, not just with men, with anything. If you go into like a job thinking you're not going to like it, you're probably going to be right. If you go into a business thinking you're going to fail, you're probably going to fail, right? So I'm not saying be naive. So using the business analogy, I'm not saying go, go into a business without a plan or without any kind of structure. Go into the business, put your business plan together, put the structure together, and hope for the best, you know, with the work that you're doing. Same with romance. But if you're just going to 
not do the work on the front end and be negative, of course it's going to fail. Hope for the best, expect the worst. Prepare. Pre okay. Prepare Hope for as the far best, as do your research. Prepare for the worst. Not necessarily prepare for the worst. You just said prepare. Why well, can't you say prepare for the worst? This is why. Because sometimes <laughs> when me, pun folks prepare for the worst, they like, they manifest it. And I hate, I hate manifestation too, but it's like, especially with men, like as a black man, people expect you to do wrong. Like they don't expect the good thing from you. And then they react based on those negative expectations. So I think if more women expected better from us, first of all, got with good dudes, expected better from us and interacted with us as if we are the king and everything that we could be, they would get better outcomes. I disagree with when you said, um, you go in with negative and that's what's gonna happen. Based off experience, that's, ha that's happened a couple times where I was expecting worse and the worst uh, didn't happen then. Why didn't it work? That's a whole different type of situation. But what I'm trying to tell you is like certain things where I would expect for it to be the opposite, it wasn't. And I, it was surprising to me. But I'm so saying, I don't how, think how do you, that's always you, the case, though. I feel you, but I'm saying, how do you think that other person feels? We can feel it when a woman thinks we ain't shit, or 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 we're we're suppressing our ain't shit. That's the best way to put it. Like we're hiding our ain't shit. We can feel that. Because at the end of the day, you got to consider the fact that ain't nobody gonna always be a hundred. It's always some lingering character flaws that we can find out over time. And that's why I said earlier, people begin to reveal who they really are over time. That's why you do your homework. You right. But even doing your homework, it can be some... All right. You act like... You, you talking like just because you've been with somebody for eight years, they can't surprise you on the eighth year. And, and do some shit or turn into a person or act on something that you would have never seen coming because you thought you knew this person for so long. I don't feel like it got nothing. I don't know. I don't know. It's no, just, I mean, it's I, really I a surprise. That. Like everything you can't really expect too much. As you can do all the homework you want to. You can't, it ain't nothing. It ain't enough homework in this world you can do on a person to really know who they are and to know that you're secured and, and nothing can ever go wrong. But that's, that's why I say you have to look at big picture stuff. I'm talking about principle. So I'm not talking about like, for instance, you know how like parents might say sometimes if somebody stopped me on the street and was like, my, my child did this, I would believe them versus if another person stopped me and said my child did that, I wouldn't believe them. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not like you you're with somebody 24 seven. Your parents aren't with you 24 seven, but they have a general idea of your character mm -hmm. and they know that, OK, worst case scenario, this is how far I can get. Versus best case scenario, this is how it can get. So when I'm talking about doing your, your due diligence or doing your homework, I'm talking about like getting a general idea of what that person is capable of. Now, sometimes you're absolutely right. Some people could go a complete 180, a complete 360 and surprise you. Exactly. Like you said. But that's so not, many years down the line. I too. feel you, but that's not the rule. Those are exceptions. What you mean? Those don't happen often. Like, that's when we're talking about narcissistic personality disorder. That's, uh, something's wrong with that person who does a 360 or 180. Most human beings are pretty consistent. That's the truth. Okay. I, okay. Okay. You, you see right. what I'm saying? I so if you, get a better, if you get a general idea of this person's character, there is always that risk that they might change. But what I'm saying is the 180 doesn't happen a lot. Most, some people, they I might deviate five degrees or whatever, but they generally are still in the same box. I get what you're saying. So if you get an idea of who that person is and you come with your best self and you expect them to come with their best self, it'll work. But again, if we like we play this game with people where it's like, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a hurt you before you hurt me. <laughs> Or I'm, a, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to outsmart you. I'm, I'm not going to give as much, you know, so I could protect myself. And it's like it doesn't work. People end up growing old and miserable. You know, so I'm just saying with our women in particular, black women in particular, if you keep number one, encouraging niggas to be more like future instead of Russell, 
And then number two, coming in with negative expectations, our relationships aren't going to work. Women have a lot of power. As much as you say y'all don't, y'all have a lot of power. Hmm. I'm talking to little dudes right now, like young dudes, and they're saying, yeah, um, I would rather act, you know, this certain type of way. I would rather act like the hood dude because those type of men have success with women. In the 70s, you had to have a suit on to holler at somebody. But women changed that. And now we're getting these types of men who are also being raised by women. So, like, we have to we have to change the way that we approach each other and the expectations we have. I like men in suits. I'm not just talking about the suit. I'm talking about the whole, like, the, the brand. I feel you. You feel what I'm saying? But, um, so, the other thing, in your video, we talked about you want to... You said you want a dude to be able to fight five men for you. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Okay, let's go back to that. Talk Going back it. and thinking about it. Okay, so I had to really like visualize that shit in my head. And it kind of sounds crazy because like, why would you want your nigga to get beat up by five niggas? But that ain't really what I was trying to get at. It's, it's really more about like just... Standing up for what you're protecting, like, just make a female. That's another, like, reason why, like, a female would be more willing to submit. Because if she know that her man don't play, that's a sense of security. You feel safe with him. You know he ain't gonna never, he gonna always have your back. He gonna always, you know, and that goes for like friendships too, not even relationships. It can be platonic friendships, like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not really, I don't wanna tell nobody to like, yeah, I should. <laughs> Risk your life for because you. the um the movie is what got me, and then I'm just going. I was just going based off that movie, and then like I was putting myself in her situation. Like she felt so vulnerable and disappointed that like she, they they was grabbing on her butt and everything. Like them dudes was harassing them, and he didn't. Hey, stop, stop! Get in the car, get in the car. Like she was she was turning around, cussing them out and shit like that, and. You right. What if they had a gun? What if, you know, people crazy out here. You right. It's just, that was just a fucked up situation, but... Um, Let me ask you, how would you, if you were a dude, right, how would you have handled that? Um, same exact scenario. Same exact scenario. If I was a dude, mm -hmm. I would have had my pistol. I would have let them know what's up. You know what I'm saying? So... So what if, but what if you didn't have your pistol? Cause that that's in the movie he didn't have a pistol on. Right, and and I'm telling you, if I was a man, I would have had mine. There was no, there is no what if I didn't have it, cause that would have been me as a man if I would have had one to protect my woman, cause that's what I would want too. I just want to feel protected, and I don't want to feel like you're not gonna do shit to protect me if we're going somewhere, if we're if we out. They was taking a walk outside, evening time, and some little busters came up harassing them, and they was grabbing on her butt, like, and he just allowed, not allowed it, but. I'm just saying, like, as a woman, though, you got to put yourself in a woman's shoes, too. Because, for one, y'all don't have to go outside and um, worry about getting raped or sexually harassed or catcalled or winked at or just talk too crazy when you walk into your car minding your business. So, as a woman, I was putting myself in her shoes as a woman. Like, and what if she would have been by herself? It wouldn't have been no difference of her being by herself walking to her car alone. The only thing that stopped her from possibly getting raped or anything... Like, from, okay, the only thing that prevented the situation from escalating was the fact that he was there. Ain't no telling what would have happened if he wasn't. So that was just the bare minimum of what happened just because he was there. And the fact that he didn't really do shit made him want to harass her even more because you see they didn't stop messing with her even after they said, let's go, let's go, get in the car, leave me alone and all that type of shit. They kept going because he didn't do shit. So... Or well, because she kept going back and forth. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, like, he wasn't doing nothing. He wasn't getting on their ass. He wasn't trying to, like, stick his chest out or nothing. Like, and she went home, curled up in that bed, and didn't even want him to touch her. And as a woman, that's like hurtful. 
I mean, even so if I, he I, have I, no I, gun, I, I, can agree I don't. With that. I wouldn't want you to get jumped. But like, I'm just saying, in that situation, it's it's fucked up because I'm speaking from a woman's perspective. No, I don't want you to die behind me. No, I don't want you. Well, if I have your kids, yeah, you should want to die behind me. Because, I should want to. <laughs> I mean, I gave you children. I <laughs> no want to and willing to are two different things. Willing to. I mean. <laughs> No, but look, though, no, same thing, because look, it's up to me if I really want to have your kids or not, right? I get the last say so, right? It's my body, right? So I'm giving I'm giving you children. You better fucking go out there and do something. Be willing to Be die. Be willing. Okay, okay. Well, okay. We gonna you keep saying want to die. You should want to die. That's the only even trade. I feel like if she going to have kids for you, you should be willing to go the extra mile to do whatever it is that... You know what I'm saying? When it comes to life or death, because you can die behind having kids. And I had your kids risking my life, my body. And there should be some type of even trade or, like, you know what I'm saying? But back to that, as a woman, I want to feel protected. And she didn't feel safe. She didn't feel protected. So now, moving forward, she, she probably might do things on her own, knowing that her man can't step in and do what she would have rather him do than whatever he did. Which was get in the car, let's go, eat, grabbing. Okay, say you out with your girl and some niggas walk up on y'all and they start calling her bitch. Hey, bitch, come suck my dick and all type of disrespectful shit. Uh, grabbing on her, walking up, just doing the most. What will you do? You ain't going to slap nobody. You ain't going to pistol with nobody. You ain't going to like at least not one of them out. And then both of y'all run or something like damn, like something. I'm not even trying, like I might even jump in and help you a little like something. I ain't even trying to say like risk your whole life, but like, hey, you get that one, I get this one. Like somebody, like at least, like, if you have hers, more than likely she gonna have yours too. So y'all both can be beating up niggas, even if y'all probably gonna get y'all ass whooped, but y'all got y'all ass whooped together. <clears throat> you ever beat up a grown man? <laughs> <laughs> you talking all this cash shit. Like, nah, yeah, nah, I'ma get him and you get But I'm but like I'm not even really dead ass serious about it. I'm just really putting tell. things in perspective. Like just like see where I'm coming from. Okay, I I, I see where you're coming Thank from. Thank you. But this That's is, it. That's this it. Is, this I'm not is trying what to say. tell no nigga to go jump in front of a train for her or go jump That's in front of That's how it comes off sometimes. No. Nah. I'm not I mean, just talking get, about with you. Yeah, I'm not just talking about with you. That, but yeah, it's just like I was just looking at, I was watching the movie. I was looking at the shit from her perspective as a woman. And you know what I'm saying? Like she was hurt by that. Like she didn't even want him on her. Like damn. And and I'm not even justifying it. I'm not even justifying what, because that shit is crazy. But you see why she started fucking with that other dude? See that he that brought still, life, but yeah, that's why I said I ain't even. No, what I'm saying is because the they did uh, another scene with the rich dude where he parked some white dude on a bicycle. Like this guy yeah, had to park five nothing. black men, and this one had to park one yeah, white dude. That like that wasn't even the same. It wasn't the same, and I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and they try to make it look like he he's yeah. more macho. Like it was yeah. a white dude on a bicycle. Relax. Yeah. Yeah. But I would say this though. This this is what I this is what I would say. I'm, so I've never had that experience where I'm with a woman and yeah, somebody. Yeah, ask my question because what would you do? Somebody, I'm about to, I'm about okay. to answer your question. I've never had the experience where like I've been with a woman and somebody tried me. Uh, maybe it's because I'm dark skinned. Maybe it's because I'm a big dude. I don't know, but I, I, I haven't had that experience. But for me, if I was giving like my little brother advice, I would say number one, if you have to have your gun with you, you should, you probably shouldn't be there, like. You probably shouldn't be in that environment. That's number no, one. No, 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 no. Let me finish. Let me finish. You come back to it. Okay, okay, okay. So okay. that's number one. Number two, um, I, you know, I know people who work in law enforcement. I know people who have been to prison and the whole nine. And what you'll see is there are a lot of dudes who are in prison, quote unquote, protecting black women. And because they didn't think shit all the way through, they did whatever they did. They ended up in prison and whatever was going to happen to that woman still ended up happening to her at a later date because now he can't protect her. He's behind bars. Or she move on with her life because he's behind bars. It's a, it's a story. Um, this uh, influencer, she said her brother is in prison right now and his cellmate um, is in prison because he beat up 
the um, his sister's boyfriend because she was getting beat by him constantly. Mm-hmm. So she called her brother. He pulled up. He beat the nigga's ass. Now he's spending like ten years in prison, and they back together. So Are again, as a man, you have to think fifteen steps ahead. You're right. You feel what you're I'm saying? Right. So exactly for me, right. number one, if you're in a place where you might have to do something to protect. You probably shouldn't be in that place. Number two, your first thought is to remove yourself before you engage. Engaging is a last minute thing because here's the thing that I don't think women understand. When you were grown ass man, to engage with somebody on some physical shit, you have to be ready to kill or die. That's how serious it is for men. Men don't play with that type of stuff, especially old men. So for me, number one, assess the environment you're going to. Number two, see if there's an exit plan. And if you absolutely must, you should have an idea of what you're risking. Because again, if you're talking about, oh, I'm protecting this person, protecting that person, you end up getting locked away. Whatever you were protecting them from could still happen. So you have to think multiple steps ahead. But again, When women grow up on like movies and shit like that, they see the nigga knock this dude out and then he turn around and knock this dude out. Life don't work like that. It don't care. It don't matter how good you can fight. You know what I'm saying? How good you think you can shoot. It does not work like that. Trust me. So, but I wish women understood that more because they wouldn't keep holding men and boys to these unrealistic standards. A lot of niggas threw their lives away on top of like they protected some. Even a dude who got stabbed recently in that bodega. He was trying to stand up for his woman or whatever the case may be, died for no reason. She probably going to end up with another nigga. Bring him to her, uh, the dude's funeral. So again, like y'all got to start thinking this shit through because men do. We got to think that shit. If I'm engaging with somebody, I'm ready to kill that nigga or he about to kill me. Now, now like that you said everything you said, like I ain't even going, like you really just... I ain't even going to say that no more because everything you said, I had to think about if it was my son just now. My son, you know, out, what, 17, 18, he got a little girlfriend and some shit happened and I'll be mad as fuck. Like, Especially like, if they could have they left. Right. And you know I know just, what I'm saying? It really, I just really had to like put myself outside of myself real quick and just really like take it back. Like if that was my son. Cause yeah. I'll be mad as well. Losing your life fighting over this bitch. What is wrong? Yeah, I'll be, it's, it's niggas I'll out be here mad. getting killed because they stepped on people's shoes. Man, look, okay, so what I was finna tell you, okay. When you said if you need a gun to go to a certain environment or whatever type of location, then you probably shouldn't be going. Okay, all I'm gonna say is this: it's danger everywhere. Everywhere. I'm not even going, I'm not even lying to you. A couple months ago, I was driving, I was on fucking um, Lawrence Road, right? It was a dude on a motorcycle. I was driving. I don't know if, I really don't even know what I did because I ain't see him. So I might have fucked up and didn't know. But this man had like, pure road rage. This man got off his motorcycle and approached my car. Now, he was knocking on my window too. In the middle of the street? In the middle of the fucking road. Yes, in the middle of the day, in the middle of the road, on Lawrence Road, this man was on a motorcycle, got off his motorcycle and approached my car. Who's at a red light? Banging on my fucking window. Now, if I would have pulled out my, what you call it, and got out of the car, I would have been wrong. And he approached my car. Now what? And I'm by myself and I'm a female. And <laughs> I don't want to say this because at the time, at that time, I ain't have no AC in my car. And my windows was down when he got off his motorcycle. I rolled him up. And it was hot as fuck. And he's sitting out there like going off on me, standing outside my car in the middle of the road, in the middle of the day on a motorcycle. Oh, so he saw you were a female? Yes. He didn't give a fuck. And it was a white man too. Of course. Got off his car. 
banging on my shit. So it was a green light. I, you know, proceeded to, you know, I, I was accelerating, moving on to the next red light. He was following me all the fucking way past. And mind you, I'm like at Hooters, driving by Hooters. I'm all the way passing food line. He's still following me. We had another red light. He got off the fucking motorcycle again and approached my car. Now what? And I'm by myself. Yeah. So I would have been wrong if I shot his ass. Because I don't know what you finna do to me. And you a white man. I don't know what you capable of. Better you than me. I don't know what you could have did. This man got off his... He was following me down Lawrence Road. I would say the way... Whichever way you handled it was the right way to handle it. Because you're here right now. You know what I'm saying? He might mess around, knock on the wrong person's window. He was following me. Yeah. He made sure that I knew how he felt. So if I would have pulled my thing, I would have been wrong. I would have been wrong. Just tell me. Wrong. It's it's not even about right or wrong. In that type of scenario, though, come on. And it's, I'm a female. Yeah, but it, it it's not about right or wrong. I'm looking at it. You know, for me, I'm looking at it from like. What are the consequences? So if if what if, are the consequences for him or me? Both people, most so for you because I don't know, dude. But for you, that could have jeopardized. If there was an alternative way to get out of that, I would rather you take that way than potentially. What was the alternative way? You're here, aren't you? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm talking about in that situation in that very moment. But it, but it, but whatever you did was the right thing to do because you're here. You didn't risk your freedom. That's what I'm saying. Part of me still wish I could have, like, you scare him? <laughs> just yeah. And I would. I ain't even want to do all. It's the middle with traffic. You know, so I'm not finna even try to. In this green light, I'm finna keep going. But he kept following me. So now at this point, I'm feeling like I'm in danger. I feel you. I feel you. So if I would have got out of that car, he could have stabbed me. He could have did, like, I should have just waved it at him just for him. I just kept going, like, that was you, smart. you walking up on me. I'm really trying to get where I'm going. And I know you're not finna follow me all the way. Like, if you would have really followed me to my actual destination, I know for a fact I would have pulled out. Because yeah, that right. shit was not okay See, but that, with me. That makes sense. Because for me, the way I think about it, with training and stuff... You don't pull it out unless you're ready to use it. You know what I'm saying? What? So for me, whatever you did and you got out without having to jeopardize your freedom, whatever, it's not even about what happens to him. But if you don't have to jeopardize your freedom, if there's an alternative, don't do it. But who does? But that's my point. It's danger everywhere. Ain't no telling. He could have been having a bad day. I might have fucked it up by cutting him off. And I didn't even know I cut him off because I ain't see him. Yeah. Yeah, no, listen, I I, I, I don't know what happened. All I, I know assume hundred percent of the time, I assume everybody crazy. Exactly. That's but, how that's how But I that's my, my point though. It don't matter where you at. I'm in the I'm in public in the middle of traffic in an intersection but at it, a red it, light. What I'm saying and though. And you is, getting off your motorcycle and approaching my car, and then you follow me to the next red light all the way down the street. You kept following me. You fucking driving alongside of me, looking at me, cussing me out, throwing me a middle finger, like, what the hell? You crazy as hell. In the middle of the road, too. 